it's tube time. We're gonna go tube deep. We're gonna go tube crazy, you know, tube wild, tubes. Uh, I love tubes. I've owned many and reviewed many uh, tube amplifiers with you guys uh, in the past. I'll, I'll, I'll link to all the the tubey goodness uh, if you haven't if you missed it. Um, but I get a lot of questions, just really kind of one on one questions about amplifier designs and different tube types and uh, tube concerns or misconceptions. So what I wanted to do is just uh, circle the wagons here and do a, a quick series on uh, sort of like tube 101 stuff. Uh, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm not really even a hobbyist builder. I've certainly soldered things, but uh, take everything I say with a little bit of a grain of salt. This isn't going to be a super technical set of videos and more a practical how do you as a, as a listener uh, and a consumer of audio gear think about tube amps and, and think about tubes and how you might incorporate them into your listening experience. So without further ado, I think we're going to start with like I said, uh, sort of common designs and layouts and 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 varieties there, and then um, probably in the next one talk about just different tube types and then follow that up with a with a FAQ. So give me a sec to get organized and we'll start talking about amplifier types. All right, and we're back. Let's talk about different configurations of uh, tube amps. So the first one I talk about is like hybrid tube amps, and that would be anything that's a mix of solid state and and tube. So what you're probably going to see in most cases is a um, an input or drive tube, which is basically taking that line level signal coming in uh, and 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 ramping it up, prepping it for uh, the power portion of amplification. Uh, and in 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 hybrids, you're going to see tubes in that first stage and then solid state in that second stage. Not always. There may be other combos of that. Anything that's a mix would be a hybrid, but that's what I most commonly see where the tubes are sort of adding flavor, so to speak, and then solid state's doing the drive, doing the push. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's certainly a great gateway drug in my mind. It's like a nice way to audition and and try tubes and play with tube swapping, tube rolling a little bit and 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 see if you care, see if you hear anything, see if it's interesting to you. They're, they're easy to own. They're typically more affordable. Um, but they, they have their limits to me in terms of ultimate performance and getting that genuine like tube sound out of them has not been really possible in my experience. Uh, next up, uh, OTL or uh, Output uh, Transformerless, um, which is basically um, the tube amps have a lot of voltage in them and you got to step that voltage down from uh, high to low voltage to match speakers or headphones and so you need a transformer to do that. Well transformers are kind of complicated to make it require a lot of materials so they can be very expensive um, and so if you don't invest in your transformers in other amp style designs you can introduce distortion you can sort of reduce the bandwidth or you can you end up eating up you know power and and so OTL advocates would argue that you're really hearing the tube more if you don't have a transformer uh, in the mix. Um, uh, there are often power limits with OTL or an OTL. They have to start like ganging lots of tubes together, which then can be a real like maintenance headache and an ownership headache. Um, I haven't heard a ton of OTL amps, maybe like two or three. Um, the, the characteristic that comes forward to me is that they are... Um, very smooth, very enjoyable, very easy to listen to, but maybe don't have as much of the the space or dynamics or separation that you get from a really great um, set amplifier, which is the next category uh, I'll transition into. So um, single-ended uh, triodes or, or set transformer coupled amps like this guy. This is the um, Bottlehead, Stereo More Bottlehead's a, a, a kit amp kit company uh, out of, I think, Washington State. Um, they've been around for a while. They put together awesome kits um, for hobbies who want to build them, and then they do appear on the secondary market sometime, but very good bang for buck uh, in terms of quality of parts. Um, so set amplifiers, right? You're going to have a transformer coupled to support your power tube um, to do that voltage uh, management. Uh, and then um, in, in, in you know most cases, you're going to have uh, one or more. You might have one per channel. You might just have a, like a dual uh, triode uh, gain stage tube. So I think this is a 12 AX7. Um, and then, you know, one one channel each driving your speakers or, or headphone amps. 
I like set. I, I re, this is my favorite typology. I just I like the sound of a lot of these tubes, the two A threes, um, the three uh, hundred Bs. Um, a lot of these tubes really really speak to me. There are tons of of triodes out there. Um, you've probably heard of you know EL thirty fours and KT. Uh, 88s and KT 77s, and, but there are many, many more if you want to go down that rabbit hole. And some people do build wacky specific amps to support them. Um, but the big names, the the big famous ones, the 2A3s and 300Bs and the 45s, like those are kind of evergreen and, and just good tube sock available and good support and all that sort of thing. Um, so anyway, that's I, I kind of lean into these amps. They they're the right level of purist for me. Um, but you know. The transformers do matter, and that's why these things tend to get kind of expensive. Is one, these power tubes are generally more expensive. Two, if you pair them with crappy transformers, there's kind of no point. <laughs> um, so, um, not no point. That's that's overstating it. But um, the components and the parts price just starts to add up, and so it tends to be a light, slightly more expensive area, and it's a little more niche. Like I don't know how many single-ended uh, triode tube amps are available from large scale manufacturers. Um, so you, it's, you, you know, more uh, niche builders are going to be producing these style of amps or hobbyist kits and whatnot. Um, within, I guess, any one of these styles of amps, but I feel like this comes up a lot with the, the set amps is you've got some stuff to think about in terms of what you want out of the amp and what you want to use it for. So um, are you getting this to drive speakers? Are you getting it to drive speakers and headphones? Um, do you, are you going to put a preamp in front of it? So would you buy just a power amp, which would basically have like RCA jacks in speaker taps out. That's it. <laughs> just a dumb headless and you're just dumb muscle. And, and then you're putting a preamp to do volume control and source management in front of it. Or in the case of this, um, stereo more, we've got, it's, a, it's a, a, integrated amp, they'd call it right where you've got, um, three inputs to choose from. So you think you'd be your DAC and your turntable and whatever, uh, and then integrated volume control. Um, and then this is a speaker amp. So only speaker taps out. Let's look real quick at a, uh, speaker and headphone amp. My good friend, the deckware taboo full review of that as well. If you want to check it out. Um, so this we have speaker taps out, but we also have headphone both in balanced and, um, single ended quarter inch guys there. Um, and this is integrated as well. It's got two inputs left and right, left and right and a volume knob handy, handy. You'll also notice there's a new tube on here. So our previous example had three tubes, input and power. These are the power. So it's like, don't judge a tube by its size. You <laughs> like tube shapes are wacky and all about when it was invented and who invented it and what the technique of manufacturing was and all that. So they're unpredictable. Size does not equate to power. Um, but this new third or, or fourth tube in this configuration, so input um, power uh, or drive power and uh, rectification. So there's a tube rectified amplifier. You can certainly rectify your AC to DC power with uh, solid state components, which is cheaper and easier and one less thing to go wrong. Um, but it also takes away a little bit of control of the user of tuning the sound of their amp. And that's a lot of the theme is how easy and bulletproof is this thing to live with versus how much control and variability do I want with it over time? Um, cool. So lots of different designs, um, for, um, set amps and, and really my favorite, but the limiting factor is you have one power tube to drive the speaker. And a lot of these single ended triodes are not terribly powerful. Like there are some like big, like as a KT one fifties, there are some big tubes out there, but I think, I don't know, don't quote me on this, but I don't know that there's like a single ended triode that's making much North of like 10, maybe 20 Watts for these big, I mean, but these are like big, crazy, insane looking tubes that are super expensive and a pain in the ass. Um, they're hard to afford and, and maybe uh, terribly sad to have to replace in the more common and practical realm of single ended tube amps. You know, you're going to see those, like I said, two, a threes and 300 B's. Um, and these are, what are these EL 86s? I want to say, um, with those, you know, you're talking about, um, I think maybe this amp makes about eight watts, if memory serves me. Um, the two A threes, you might get three and a half watts out of. Three hundred Bs, you might get eight watts out of. So, 
if you're talking about speakers, you need some pretty efficient speakers to pair well and successfully with a single-ended tube amp. You know, maybe north of 91 dB, but ideally maybe north of 96 dB. Um, if you're talking about headphones, of course, your options uh, are, you know, like outside of like HE6s and, and Sesfaras and the crazy hard to drive headphones, you know, a couple of watts will do you. So, you know, you got more options there. Although often in headphone applications, um, tubes aren't pushed maybe as much because they're trying to control the noise floor, which like you wouldn't really hear or care about in a speaker environment, but you will definitely pick up on a high sensitive headphone. Um, so you, even if you're using one of those tubes, it doesn't mean that you're getting, you're going to have that much power on tap. It sort of depends on, on, on how the amp was designed. So if you're in the speaker world and you need more power or potentially even in the headphone world, haha, and you need more power, um, then you might look at a push pull. All right, so this is a decoratory, it's again speaker only amp, uh, but it's my example for push-pull here. So look at all these tubes. So now you have two power tubes and these are triodes. Um, these are the lovely uh, reissued Tung Sol uh, 6L6GC. I like these a lot. I liked these in the um, amps and sound bigger Ben as well, sort of a sweeter, sound of this family, this sort of KT88 EL34 arena. Um, so in this design, you've got your your uh, input or gain or drive tube here. You've got your two power tubes. You've got your uh, tube rectifier. And then you've also got a uh, voltage a tube, voltage controller, it's part of my language, voltage regulator, yeah. Um, and then you've got a bunch of massive transformers on here. Um, this amp is also dual mono. So that means there's a right channel and a left channel side and everything's mirrored and duplicated. So you've got 10 tubes now in this environment <laughs> to manage. Um, and you know, these quads need to match each other. So buying match tubes is just another consideration. Um, which is also true generally in, in uh, you know, a two tube set configuration that you'd want your left and channel tubes to be, be power matched. Although there is some variability like this amp, I can't see it, but this amp actually allows you to change the total volume of each channel, which is helpful, not just for dealing with unmatched tubes, but also for dealing with room conditions and whatnot. Um, anyway, there's an integrated speaker amp with a couple taps in the back and a switch and a volume knob and it's also got uh, switches for 4 and 8 ohm speakers again speaker impedance matching important um, so yeah that that sort of sums up the top typologies I wanted to talk about so hybrid uh, OTL um, uh, set or, or single ended uh, and then uh, push pull um, if you need power and you like the sound of the triodes then push pull is kind of where you're going speaker wise if you um uh kind of want that that purest low power um really tubey tube tube experience then maybe otl is of interest hybrid certainly a great gateway drug but i generally land on set as my favorite like those magical blow your mind tube listening moments to me have always occurred with um uh, single ended triode experiences 2a3s 300b's just magic, whether that's in headphones or in speakers, um, similarly the case. And I will, hopefully I will have cut in a bunch of other amps as I was talking that represent these different typologies. So we'll leave it there. Um, the next installment of the series, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into a bunch of these specific tubes and just talk about, talk about them a little bit, um, characteristics and blah, blah, blah. And then, um, either on that one or in a following one, we'll do like some just FAQ about living, living the tube life and what it means to you. So hope you enjoyed until uh, next time. This is uh, Seincraft signing out.